And welcome back to another Electronics and More video. If you've been a follower of my channel for a few years, you would know that a while back I uploaded a video showing how to make these ring connectors or lug connectors and save a lot of money in the process. Right here are a bunch that I just made using this tool now to make life a little easier for me. If you wanted to purchase two of these in 6 gauge at Walmart, you'd be spending around $4 including tax. And if you went over to Harbor Freight, you could probably pick two of them up like that for around $2.50. Each one of these only cost me $0.18 cents to make. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. You'll see an end card after watching this video. And I also placed a link in the video description area to that video. Keep in mind, it's an older video. I made it probably around four years ago. It does have around three quarters of a million views. And it was made while I was living on an island in the Bahamas when I didn't have this kind of a hydraulic crimper. So what I ended up doing was soldering the connector directly onto the copper wire and it worked extremely well. Some people questioned, oh, it's not that great. You have a soldered connection. It's going to be a higher resistance connection. And I never experienced any problems with any cables that I made all the way up to one watt or two watt wire. Everything worked just fine. So in this video, what I'm going to do is show you this cool tool, which I now have, which I didn't have back then. I'm going to show you how I make one of these very quickly. And I'm also going to take the connectors and I'm going to put them on the end of two identical cables. One of the cables is going to have these connectors soldered onto them. And the other cable is going to have them crimped using very high pressure with the tool you see right here. Now, like all my other videos, if you're interested in this tool, there will be a link placed in the video description area. The hydraulic crimper you're looking at here, I believe, is right around 16 tons of pressure. And it also includes all the dies that you see right here. And this right here is what we're going to be using. It will put a 100 amp load on those cables using the soldered and crimped connections. So one end of the soldered cable is going to go to the battery. The other end where the connectors are soldered will be clipped onto these clamps and we're going to measure the voltage at the point right here of the clamps between these two and I'm going to apply the load. We're going to see what kind of a voltage drop we get and then I'm going to repeat the test using the wires that have been clamped using the hydraulic crimping tool. Now if you look at this connector right here, you can see it goes out to the end like it was put in a vise. That's because of the hydraulic crimper. Now if you look at my other video, if you want one that has a flat bottom, completely flat, so when you screw this down, it will lay flat, alright? This lays kind of flat, but not perfectly flat. But if you want it the other way, you're going to have to use the hammer as I show in my other video. Then it will just go straight over and curve down and lay flat. If you don't mind, then the hydraulic crimper can do it the way you see right here. Now let me show you how I make one of these using the crimper. Here is one of the cables I'll be using. So on this one, these will be crimped, and on the other one, they will be soldered. Using the hydraulic crimper is very simple. You turn this clockwise all the way. You could pump the handle up. And you can see the piston coming out right over there. When you're done, turn that, and it goes right back down. All right. So if you want to crimp a terminal, this is going to be good, the smallest size down to 4 gauge. It will crimp 6 gauge, but the problem is it doesn't get it tight enough, so I modified it by taking these brass strips, and I put it inside the jaw right there. It's going to fit right in there. Let me show you if I can get one in. All right, you see it goes like that. And then there's another one right here to go on the opposite side, and then I could put the lug in there and then crimp it all the way down for 6 gauge wire. If you'd like to flatten something like the end of this connector, then what you're going to do, flip these around as shown, and then you can position this right in the center and flatten it. Just push this pin out all the way that way, pop it back in after you flip these around. Let me put this in position and flatten it. Alright, you can see it's in position. Let me do this on camera. And that thing is flat as you're ever going to get it. Flip this around, loosen that, and is that beautiful? 
going to drill right in the middle over there. This end, you're just going to ream it out. You can just take the end of a needle nose and go like that to clear that all away. You see how nice that's getting? Make sure it's all reamed so the wire slides in easily and you'll be good to go. Now I'm going to drill the hole. Some people prefer to leave this attached to the length of copper, flatten it, drill it, then cut it. The only problem is if you're using a tubing cutter, you can see it makes it kind of tapered here. You're not going to be able to roll that around this pipe smoothly, so I prefer to flatten, hold it with the needle nose, which is very simple. Hold it right there, drill it, and then I can just pop it off, file it lightly, and I'm all done. So let me show you that right now. So to me, that's the easier way to do it. Next, I'm just going to take this file, just gently go over this. Remember, this happens very quickly. It's taking a little longer because I'm in front of a camera and I'm explaining things. But it shouldn't take you more than about a minute and a half to make one of these. If you have the pipe ready, the tubing cutter, and the drill. I just like to round these off just a little bit. All right. And that's it. Beautiful. Just saved yourself a lot of money. And the bottom. I already reamed it out. Now let's crimp it onto the wire. Okay, you can see the connector slid on. You want to make sure that the tubing that you use is just slightly larger than the diameter of the wire. Heat shrink tubing ready to go on. Once this is crimped, slide it up. Now I'm going to place this in the jaws of the hydraulic crimper and secure it. Okay, right there. You can see it's in there with the extra pieces of metal to make the diameter smaller. Let me crimp. And that's it. Release right here. Pull it out and look at how beautiful that is. That will not come undone. You slide the heat shrink over and I'm going to repeat this for all the other ends of this cable. When I'm done doing that, I'll solder the other cable. Now over here is what it looks like if you don't use these inside the crimping die to make it even tighter. You can see it has that hex pattern and it's probably okay but I don't want to chance it and that's why I use those in the crimping die. And this one here is all complete. You can see how nice the ends look. Got the connection there with the heat shrink. Now let's do the soldered connection. All right, the heat shrink is slid over the wire. I took the connector, applied some flux to the inside of the connector, as well as the outside of the wire. Going to leave a small space. I'm then going to take the torch, heat up just that connector, and capillary action will melt the solder and pull it into that connector. And the solder that I'm using is 40% tin, 60% lead. After I do this one, I'm going to repeat the same thing for the remaining three. There it goes. Let it all flow right in. Let it cool. Okay, this cable's complete. Everything is soldered. I left one heat shrink off. This way it's easy to identify the cable that has been soldered. Now I need to find a secure way to connect the clamp from the load tester to the cables that I made. And you can see this is very thick. It's got the hole in it. So what I'm going to do is remove the clamp right here. Slide this off. And you can see it's screwed in right here. I'm going to remove the screw and I'm going to bolt it onto the cable for a very secure fit when I do the test. I'll do that for the positive and negative. The other end of the cable will be attached to the battery using the screw posts and then I'll push the button and we're going to apply the load and measure the voltage across those terminals. 
Okay, it's a little windy and noisy outside, so hopefully you can hear everything. This is the cable that has the high pressure crimped connectors. And you can see I have the copper plates making it easy to connect to this brand new marine battery, which is a 550 cranking amp battery. And I'm going to take this one, place it on that bolt. Now over here, this is where I joined everything together with the bolts. This is from the load tester, then the cable. And what I did is I inserted alligator clips into that connection on top of the lugs where it connects to the load tester. And that goes over here to this digital meter, which is going to output the voltage. And over here is the load tester. So I'm going to connect it to the battery, push this button down for five seconds, and we're going to see what happens to the voltage. Once that's done, we're going to repeat the test with the other cable that was soldered. Okay, here we go. Let's push it and see what the voltage drops to. Five seconds. So about 11 and a quarter after five seconds. That's 100 amps, let it recover. And then we're gonna look at the initial voltage and we're gonna compare it to the one that's soldered. All right, the cable that's soldered is now connected. And let's see what's going on here. Starting voltage is 1277. Let's push the button down and see what happens. Five seconds. So 1137, 1138 was the low that time. As you can see, there wasn't that much of a difference between the soldered cable and the one that was crimped. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you very much for watching.